What's up, guys? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Podcast. I am DK Wrestler. And I'm MD Shady. And in today's podcast, we have a very interesting topic to discuss about. And this is based off of a recent video that was posted by our good friends over at K Dog and Fish. Shout out to them, where they talked about the vinyl two packs and basically how they were a fan of them. And then all of a sudden they just kind of disappeared and there was no real reason why they kind of disappeared. And there were some theories about how they could have ended or what could have made them better to continue them. But we thought that as a topic, we would elaborate on that more, plus more Funko products that aren't pops as terms to a topic on the podcast today, which on this podcast, we're going to have 15 products that Funko has done that aren't pops. We're not going to mention like the subcategory of pops, like let's say Pop Pez. The Biddy Pops, for example, we won't be mentioning about those and like the Pocket Pops. So stuff like that because they're very similar to the actual Pops, but they're a little bit different. We're going to stay away from that. But we do have 15 different products that Funko have made in the past or currently, whether they have continued to make them to today in 2023 as we're recording this, or they have discontinued at some point. So I guess we might as well kick off with the first product. This is actually the first one they ever made that I'm going to mention is the Wacky Wobbler, created in 1998 when the company was founded. And basically, the best way I can describe it is that it's simply just like a seven inch bobblehead. I don't think there's anything else to really describe about a wacky wobbler. Yeah, I mean, wacky wobblers are pretty iconic. I feel like they've been around, obviously, since the date that you said. But I feel like everybody has seen one at some point. They were all over the place before Funko was actually this big name that is pretty much like a household name at this point. So Wacky Wobblers, yeah, you'd see them all the time, whether it's at like a random store, like a like a comic shop or like a store, like let's say, for instance, like Bad Manners, I believe that used to be in the mall in our local city. So yeah, I mean, they're pretty cool. I mean, they did the same thing that Funko Pops do essentially, but in more of like a traditional bobblehead style. Yeah, you mentioned about finding them at random places i remember seeing them and i probably didn't even know that it was a wacky wobbler but it probably was when they had them as prizes at the midway which is this big arcade in Niagara Falls for those that might not know. And yeah, I remember seeing like a like a Darth Vader one and I might have even seen some of the ones that like Funko had licenses before they were able to really make pops for like Austin Powers was one of them. But I do have some listed down here that I wanted to discuss about. The first ever Wacky Wobbler was Big Boy. So we have to discuss about that. And I actually seen some eBay listings like last night on it and they're going for like 250. I don't know if it's US or Canadian, but regardless, like that's pretty pricey i mean freddy funko was created because of the wacky wobbler and then one i wanted to mention because there's actually not a funko pop product for this license and that is kick ass which was made into wacky wobbler not made into a pop so i thought i'd mention that but something that i also wanted to mention is that wacky wobblers are making a comeback in 2023 they're doing this thing called the fun on the run tour where they're going to a bunch of places leading up to san diego comic-con and they have this box kind of like the box of fun where you get a bunch of different things including a I believe they're creating Biddy Pops based off of Freddy Funko and some of the mascots they've created there. But then there's also going to be a wacky wobbler of a new Freddy Funko that features his dog Proto. So if you guys have seen photos of that, I mean, that's a pretty sweet wacky wobbler. It's cool for that to kind of come back. Wacky wobblers have discontinued. They rebranded to wobblers, I believe, at some point, and they ended in like 2018, I believe. So as terms to ratings for this, I'd rate wacky wobblers probably a solid 8 out of 10. I don't think there's really a bad wacky wobbler. Yeah, I'd probably give it around, yeah, like 8.5, something around there. I mean, it's such a classic Funko product, and there's so many different IPs that have had wacky wobblers, and they're so cool. So yeah, I think like an 8 or 8.5 is around the rating for the wacky wobblers. All right, so the next product we're going to be talking about is Mystery Minis. Of course, they were created in 2013, and the best way to describe them, they're basically like 2.5-inch figures, and they all have different rarities. I remember about the Walking Dead ones that were exclusive to San Diego Comic-Con back in the day. When they first made Mystery Minis in 2013, they were exclusive to like Comic-Cons, so you couldn't find them as much as you can find them in a store now. There were rarities that were like super rare, like... Today's mystery minis, the rarest is a 1 in 72. 
But back then there was like a one in 240, one in 360, like stupid rarities like that back in those days. And yeah, mystery minis, they're pretty cool. But there are some pros and cons, I feel, with mystery minis, especially when it comes to cons when the newer ones nowadays, for those that might not know, uh, when you buy a full case of mystery minis, it's 12 inside. And when you see a rarity on the back of it and it's one in six for a figure, you're guaranteed two of that figure because of it being a case of 12. So when you see a one in 12, you're guaranteed one figure. But if it's a one in six, you're guaranteed two of that figure. So if you're getting a case by yourself, you're left with an extra figure, which I mean, you could give to a friend, but you could also sell. Or in our case, because we had done mystery mini unboxings a bunch of times on the channel in the past, where if we split on a mystery mini case, and there's a bunch of one and sixes, we can easily just each get one. And then when it comes to the one and twelves, we would kind of have to separate that. And same with the rare ones, like one in 24, one in 36, one in 72. And I guess some that I can mention, obviously the Toy Story 4 set, which I bought way too many cases. Like I look back, I try to sell some at toy shows nowadays with so many duplicates that I have. I have almost the entire set besides, I believe, all three Target exclusives and the one in 72 racks. Once I find those, I got all of the mystery minis in that set. And then there's some things like Stranger Things, like they've made like three series, I believe, of Stranger Things minis. The ad icons, which I know MD will probably talk about also, because I believe he bought one or two cases of those also. There's been a decent set of mystery minis, but there's also been some crappy mystery minis also, especially when half the case are duplicates. Yeah, mystery minis definitely do have pros and cons, and I do love opening them up. So I guess I'll start with the pros. Pretty cool figures. I mean, you have that whole like, okay, it's a mystery. What am I going to get in this box? That always is a thrill. But then I guess the con to that is also you don't know what you're going to get, especially if you're aiming for like a really cool figure that you want. And it happens to be like a one in 72. Chances are you're probably not going to get it. And you're still not even guaranteed it, even if you do buy like, let's say three whole cases or whatever the math ends up working out to be. So that is definitely one con with the mystery minis. More pros, though, is that the sets are really nice. They do set of figures that are generally pretty cool and they usually have it so that the rare ones are either like variants or like characters that people would really really want so it makes sense to be a rare one and then usually your commons are just kind of some of the main characters from whatever set that it is and yeah i do actually have the ad icons box beside me that is one of my more favorite of the mystery minis and then there are some sets that aren't that great for different reasons 10 to 12 13 dollars canadian for one figure I feel like there is better Funko products that you can buy for that price or even just a little bit more that makes it a little bit more worth the value, at least in my opinion. Yeah, especially considering like you look at, let's say even a 12 or $13 mini figure, it's only like two or three more dollars to get the Funko Pop, which is double the size. Uh, in exactly. both the height and the width of the figure also. And you get this cool box, considering like with mystery minis, most of the time you're ripping right through the box. As terms of the ratings, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I enjoy mystery minis very much, but yeah, there is the con of they're pretty expensive for the size of them. And then a lot of times of the rarities being crap at times when half of them are duplicates yeah i would agree it, exactly at 7.5 i mean i love mystery mini so it's hard to mark them down but at the same time they're not perfect by any means so 7.5 makes sense all right so the next figure we're going to be talking about is hikari figures I feel like a lot of people don't even know what a Hikari figure is in 2023, but it's actually something that definitely MD and I have seen at different conventions. Also, they were created in 2014. They're eight inch figures, I would say, that are very limited pieces. Like I'm talking every single Hikari I have seen has been 1K or less. Like, I don't think I've seen a Hikari figure that is more than 1,000 pieces. And it's weird because they're a product that, even at the low piece, kind of let's say some I see for like 450 pieces or 600 pieces, they're generally pretty cheap nowadays for a very limited piece count. And there's some that I can mention, like they've made different versions of Buzz Lightyear, I remember, and then they do these cool colorways. The Star Wars ones, like I remember the one they did of Greedo, I believe. They've done a couple of Stave Puff Marshmallow Mans that look really cool in the Hikari form. 
Yeah, Hikari figures are pretty interesting. It's actually a product that I've never added to my collection, and I do plan on getting at least one product from everything that uh, Funko has uh, like licensed or put out. So I definitely need to find a Hikari figure at some point. I have had the opportunity to buy some. I remember at our local Hot Topic, I believe they had like Boba Fett, I think it was. And the interesting thing with the Hikari figures that you kind of mentioned is the different colorways. And I feel like that's why the piece numbers are so low. Let's say, like you said, with like 480, I think is a number that they usually use. It'll be like 480 of that colorway. And then they'll do like four or five other colorways for the same character, which is very interesting. They're pretty cool figures. I definitely have to find like one that I really want to add to my collection. But uh, it isn't something that I really ever thought about collecting in like a mass amount. Though I definitely will have to do some Google searches and look at some people's Hakari collections because I feel like they would look really cool all like side by side. As terms of rating, I rated it a six out of 10. I think it has to do with these are massive figures, so they will take up a lot of space. But at the same time, there's also not a lot of posing with them also. I think every single one do have what Funko Pops used to have back in 2010 to like 2015 is just arms to the side. There's no cool posing like you see with Pops or even we discuss about with minis and how cool the poses can be for those nowadays. Yeah, I, I think I'll probably give it a five out of 10. I mean, it really is that, yeah, these figures are just standing in line with their arms down to the side. So there's not a ton going on with them, but I do think that they do have a interesting little like collectability aspect of them, especially with the lower piece counts. So the next product we're going to be talking about is something that MD and I have had so much disgruntlement, if that's even a word, towards it. That's Dorbs. Created in 2016. Best way I can explain them, they are like two inch, maybe like one and a half, 1.75 inch figures. Their eyes are closed, but they smile at the same time. And there actually were some that were rides. And then there was actually, I researched an XL Dorbs, which is a six inch Dorbs. Ones that I can remember off the top of my head, they did Toy Story ones, which I believe were like the last ones they ever created before discontinuing them. And then for the longest time, the Dorbs was the only way you can get a Funko product of Fred with the Mystery Machine from Scooby-Doo, which ticked a lot of people off because they want a Fred with the Mystery Machine, but they hate Dorbs. And I mean, yeah, I couldn't see where Funko was going with thinking that this was going to be such a successful thing. I mean, I can't even say that there's some that look all right. They just look so weird, like even the Ghost Rider one. Yeah, so the thing about Dorbs that they don't do, which Funko Pops do very well, Funko Pops are kind of more stylized to the character, whereas a Dorb is just one shape, and it's kind of just the paint that goes on it, which makes it like said character, which is uh, very similar to, let's say, like a company, I don't know if this is the company name, but Bear Bricks. Yeah, Dorbs are very interesting. I feel like at some point I do need to add a Dorb to my collection because I don't think I actually have any, which is surprising because definitely when me and DK started collecting Funko, they were kind of everywhere at the time and they were very cheap. They were always going on sale and that's because no one really wanted them. I know that some people do like to collect them, but uh, for me, it's just they're just not it. It's almost like a waste of money in my thoughts. As terms of rating for Dorbs, I give it a solid 4 out of 10, and I think I'm even being too nice about that rating. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same number, and I thought the same thing. That seems a little too nice because it's just something I'm not interested in. So 4, that's 40%. But at the same time, there is a fan base for them, so you have to kind of take that into consideration. All right, so the next Funko product is kind of similar to it. It's Pint Size Heroes, created in 2016. And you can easily say these are like one inch figures. They're like the same size as like what Biddy Pops are nowadays. Normally they come in mystery bags. You've probably seen them at a Hot Topic. They're like on the counter. And then some of them come in two packs which actually only one license, I believe, came in two packs, and that was Fortnite. Fortnite came into the two packs for Pint Size Heroes. I remember there being the WWE ones because I did have, I believe, the Kevin Owens and Sasha Banks. I don't know what to say about them because they're literally like the same shape pretty much as a Dorb, except they're really f***ing tiny. Like, they, like you think that <laughs> Dorbs are tiny? 
Pint size heroes are like microscopic compared to Dorbs. Yeah, pint size heroes definitely are small. I do enjoy them a lot more than Dorbs, but I think that that's because they do have that mystery mini feel to them where you kind of don't know what you're getting. And there was a point where I loved collecting the pint size heroes, especially with the Steven Universe set. Me and my girlfriend at the time were collecting them. We'd pick them up at, let's say, like Niagara Falls Comic Con. I know there was a booth that had a ton of those there. or We'd find them at GameStop. Yeah, pint size heroes definitely has the same thing going with it with the dorbs they're kind of all the same shape but they are a little bit more stylized like i believe they have like a hair piece on the top of their head or let's say if they wore like a hat or something like that that's a little bit better than with the dorbs i think for pine sides heroes oh this is because now you're bringing up the point about yeah the mystery of it makes it a little bit better because i put this as a three out of ten because of how tiny they are it's like I think about like what the price point could have been back in the day for them. And let's say like, even I feel if they sold them five bucks US, that's way too expensive for how tiny these things are. So you know what, I'll just say four out of 10 also instead of three, just because of the mystery aspect. Yeah, I'm going to go with a 5 out of 10 right in the middle. And that's because, yeah, the mystery aspect is really cool. They are small. But one thing that is good about them, if I'm not mistaken, is that I believe that there's no actual rarity for the figures. I believe they're just, like, let's say if there's 12 in a case similar to Mystery Minis and there's 12 in the set, there's one of each figure, I believe. But I think they came in, like, boxes of 24. So you still have a chance of pulling doubles, let's say, if you bought 12. But I don't think there is a rarity on them, which was uh, pretty decent because it made it a lot easier to get full collection collections of them. All right, so the next figure we're going to be talking about is Vinyl Idols. They were created in 2015. They were between 8 to 10 inch figures. The best way that I can describe what they look like is like claymation type faces, almost like robot chicken shaped characters is the best way I can explain it. I think you might be able to describe more considering I believe you have some Vinyl Idols. Yeah, I do have out of box. I believe I threw the boxes out. The two dodgeball ones. I really enjoy them. I think that they're cool. I wish that we would have seen maybe more in the collection and not just what we have seen. There are some cool ones that I'm very interested in. Obviously, the dodgeball ones are awesome. And I feel like I don't have to get the pop vinyls now for dodgeball because I have the idols. And then other ones that I'm interested in is like the different weird characters they did for Seinfeld before we even had Seinfeld pops. I believe they did the Soup Nazi, Newman. And then they also did, I believe it's George Costanza's dad. I think that those are the ones I did. And he has like the Festivus poll. So I do have to get my hands on those at some point because I love collecting Seinfeld stuff. They also did Marty and Doc for Back to the Future. I did a little research last night and they looked pretty funny in that. And actually a licensor that I feel like would benefit from vinyl idols because I feel like the face moldings look exactly identical would be Rick and Morty. I think Rick and Morty would look perfect for it's vinyl idols. It's funny that you idols. said that because as soon as you said that, I was thinking solar opposites. So it makes sense because it is the same animator yeah. that does the show. So yeah, definitely. I think that if Funko were to bring back some vinyl idols, it would be perfect if they did like solar opposites and Rick and Morty. That'd be really cool. So the next product we're going to be talking about is Rock Candy. So they were created in 2016. Uh, what? We never did a rating on the vinyl idols. Oh, whoops. Seven out of 10. <laughs> I'd probably give it like a six. All right. Now the next product we're going to be talking about, it's Rock Candy. So created in 2016, there are basically five inch figures, I guess I would say, and they all had pretty decent poses. I know some that I listed off here, there was some DC Comics ones. The one I remember that kind of introduced me to it was Riverdale when they had Waves of Pops. They also announced the Rock Candy and then they did a lot for Harry Potter also. I know they did more, but I can't think of them off the top of my head, but but they were cool little pieces, but they were one of those things that like it seemed like it could take off because they had much more detail and like articulation, I guess, than Funko Pops. But they just never really took off. And maybe that's if we're talking pros and cons. And that's because I feel like they were a bit of an expensive figure because of how much more detail there was in those than there were in Pops. Hence why we would go to our local GameStop or I guess at the time it would have been EB Games where like they would always be on clearance, like clearance clearance like more than once so it'd be a clearance on one price and they'd have to lower it even more because people didn't really want to buy rock candy all that much yeah rock candy very interesting one thing about rock candy that at least it was for a while because it kind of stopped is that it was just female characters that were the rock candy figures 
until I believe they did like the Harry Potter set and there was like Harry and Voldemort and random characters in there where it's like, okay, why is there randomly like males in the rock candy lineup now when it's been solely just 100% females? And I actually do have one in my collection that is the Hot Topic Flocked Corella de Ville. That one, I believe I found it at a garage sale for like two bucks. And I was super stoked about that because I always wanted rock candy, but I felt like there wasn't anything that really like caught my interest with them. But Cruella de Vil, super awesome. And she's flocked, which makes a lot of sense with her big jacket, possibly made out of animal fur. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Rock candies are gorgeous. They're really nice figures. I should probably consider picking up a few different characters, but probably not like those Harry Potter ones. Like I said, I, I feel like it was such a good idea to have this lineup that is solely just female characters. And they kind of screwed that up a little bit. Yeah, so the next product we're going to be talking about is basically what started the idea of this pod from K-Dog and Fish. It's the vinyls, V-Y-N-L. They were created in 2017, and I guess I could say they're 3-inch figures. I want to say they're 3-inch. I don't think they were quite 4-inch. Maybe they were 4-inch, but they were always in two packs. There was never singular vinyl figures. Yeah, I wanted to bring up some points that K-Dog and Fish mentioned about what possibly could have made vinyl just kind of disappear and not really grab interest for many people people and i think the first thing is the fact that they were always in two packs there were never singular vinyls i mean when you deal with a bunch of two pack items it's more than obviously a singular item so i feel like not a lot of people wanted to invest to it especially because at the time i think a lot of people were just hardcore about funko pops and anything brand new that funko would make they just didn't accept until a product we're going to be talking about that came out in 2020 but i think they were pretty decent i mean it depends on what it was like and i think another point that k dog and fish brought up is that i think vinyls would have thrived better and they did it for some but they didn't do it for all is if they actually had two characters that like were actually meant to be together in a two pack. So example, I have the Woody and Buzz Lightyear vinyl. They were showing off the Dustin and Steve vinyl from Stranger Things, which through, I believe, season two, you always seen them together. But then you have these random ones. Like I have two of the Star Wars ones of like Darth Vader and Stormtrooper. Like, okay, it kind of makes sense, but wouldn't have been better if it was like Darth Vader and the Emperor. And then you had Obi-Wan and Darth Maul. It's like, okay, that makes sense for episode one. But what if it was a three pack and you added Qui gone like that would have made more sense but vinyl did brought up some licensors that we still to this day have not gotten pops for i believe like there is the fan expo exclusive bob and doug mckenzie vinyl that was really cool we actually seen it in person because we were at fan expo that year that funko was there and then they never made pops for cheech and chong but they made vinyl for cheech and chong yeah, I think the best way to like describe the vinyl two packs is they're basically pops and dorbs kind of mashed together. At least that's the way that I kind of think of them. And I actually really do enjoy the vinyl two packs. I recently sold the Captain Crunch with the Crunchberry Beast. I like that one because it is at icons, but I felt like I didn't really have any room in my collection for it, like a good spot to put it essentially. So I got rid of it. But I do still own the Gremlins two pack that comes with Gizmo, and I guess it'd be striper it might just be a generic gremlin i can't remember and i believe that those are the ones with the 3d glasses that i own because there also is a like common two pack of them where they don't have the 3d glasses so i will have to find that i believe we actually did just see it at the local toy show that we had tables at but uh, i didn't pick it up then because i feel like that's one that is just so cheap and easy to get whenever i feel is the time to actually buy that and i was going to mention the bob and doug mckenzie that makes sense for the two pack so yeah i don't know overall i do enjoy the vinyl two packs and i rated them seven out of ten i think that's a fair assessment at least in my opinion i don't know if that's too high but i think it's a little fair it's not way up there yeah i'd probably do like six and a half out of ten maybe just a little lower than seven they're cool they're definitely not the best but they're pretty solid figures Next up, we have the five star figures. They were created in 2018. Yeah, they were like three inch figures and they had cool accessories with them. Like big example, I own the tomato head five star figure from Fortnite and it came with his pickaxe, which is just an oversized pizza cutter and then a slurp barrel. And then some of them, I believe like the Scott Pilgrim versus the world ones. It was like Scott Pilgrim and he had the guitar and then some sort of weapon and then there's various Disney and Pixar ones. I know recently, and I think even still, our local GameStop is still trying to sell them. So I, I don't know. I think this is one of those things also that like seemed like it was something that 
could take off because they come in these like they come in a tiny box but it has a small window of a circle so you can see it and then you open it up and you can actually see the figure inside of there so you can actually preview it before buying it yeah i don't i don't know like they seemed cool but yeah i i can kind of see why they didn't take off at the same time yeah i'm kind of in the same boat with you on this one like they had potential for sure but it feels like it died as fast as it came around and i know there was like the stranger things ones that i debated on buying for a while and i thought i was gonna get and i never got them again it's one of those things where i'll probably have to buy at least one just to say i have it in my collection but i don't think i'd want more than that and as terms to the ratings for the five star figure I think I wrote down seven, but I think I'm going with 6.75 out of 10. 6.75. Okay. Yeah. My rating on these is going to have to be five. I mean, it makes sense. Five star figures. They had potential. So that definitely was a good thing, but it feels like it just ended so quickly and we don't really see them that much anymore. feel like they didn't really sell that great either. And I don't know. They were just weird figures, very like chibi like as well. Like if some people say like, oh, Funko Pops look so much like the chibi stylation, the five star figures are definitely that to a T. All right, so the next product we're going to be talking about is mini vinyl figures. Now, basically created in 2018, and they are basically the same thing as mystery minis, but without the mystery. It is the figures where they come in a more wider box, but you do get to see what the figure is before you buy buy it so there's obviously pros and cons to this because the pro is you get to know what figure you're getting you get to look through it and if there's nothing that you want then you can just leave it in there but that's also the con because if you're a retail store and you have these vinyl figures but then they end up sitting because then people can realize okay we don't need to get this so it just keeps sitting and sitting and sitting and the original mini vinyl figures i think they were like one out of 12 so there were one of each of them per case so they did the mickey 80th anniversary and then they did the crash bandicoot like crash team racing ones later on and then they also did i think the more recent ones that are actually under the mini vinyl figure lineup is the pixar ones where it's the different pixar shorts those ones are pretty sweet, but of course you cannot find Luxo Jr. because everyone wants Luxo Jr. And then eventually it became the mystery minis, but then you found out what they are and especially still with those rarities. So it leads to those problems of, oh, there's the one in six. I don't need that one. Oh, there's the one in 72. I can go snag it instead of going to grab a mystery mini and then be like, this might be the one in 72. And then it ends up being a one in six. Yeah, I do like that Pixar lineup because you do have characters in there that don't really see products for. Kind of like Luxo Jr. as well as, I forget what the exact name is, but the bird from the Pixar short before Monsters Inc. Really enjoy that. And I do need to buy that figure specifically because I do want one of this product again, like I said before. But yeah, other than that, these aren't the best. I don't really love the knowing what you're getting, especially when it comes to little minifigures like this. I believe that the mystery aspect is what makes them the most fun. Yeah, and especially like looking at the mystery mini ones that end up turning into mystery vinyl figures. Like you do the Marvel zombie ones. Like we'll go to Sunrise Records and they have like two cases of them, but they're filled with like the same character because A, there is the one in six that can easily be accessible. And then at the same time, no one gives a f about Marvel zombies. So you got that on top of it where Funko would make these mystery mini lineups that don't sell. So then they think it sells better when you make the mini vinyl figures and you get to know what it is. So as terms to rating, I'm going to do 6.5. They are detail figures, but not knowing the mystery of it is what rates it lower than obviously the 7.5 we would have given mystery minis. Yeah, I I don't like these that much. I do think that the Pixar lineup is really cool because you don't have products like that. But I feel like Funko could also just do other products with those things, like even just a normal mystery mini set or even uh, turning some of these characters into Funko Pops themselves. I got to give this a low rating. I'm thinking like three. That's steep. <laughs> All right. So the next Funko product we're going to be talking about is Paka Paka. They were created in 2019 and they are two inch figures. They come in a clear bag, but before you get to see the clear bag, they're actually inside of a ball. Uh, there'll be some sort of certain color. You squeeze the sides and then the ball basically breaks from there. And then there's the clear plastic bag with whatever figure there are. They've done various different lineups. It seems like their more popular one they had was 
Boo Hollow, which is like the Halloween themed one. They even made like little mini figures out of that. The most recent one I believe I could think of is the Advocado one, which is just avocados and they have some sort of face. But I know the ones that MD and I were really interested in, and we do have a couple of each of these, were the Soda Cats, which are the cats that are basically in the shape of a soda can. And they basically spoof off different flavors of drinks. And then there's also the soup troops. They come in a little bowl and it's spoofing off a different kind of soup, whether it's tomato soup. There was the clam chowder one I was trying to get. There's chicken noodle. Uh, those ones can be very cool. But then you got those random ones like there's one called like Kawaii Village or something. It's some sort of Japanese themed one. Some were great, but some were garbage at the same time. It's not one of Funko's greatest products, but it's not one of their worst products either. Yeah, I really enjoy the pack a pack because it is, again, that mystery thing. It's cool that it's not like designed for like a certain show or anything like that it's just something that funko has completely made which is so cool because it's fun to collect certain different things like that and not have to worry about different uh like tv shows that you personally like or other things in pop culture and it's cool that you can also get like the pack a pack a dragon which is like the most rare figure out of each of the set with whatever different colorway as so that's really interesting i still don't have one of those in my collection and i hope that they continue with the pack pack i've never used the machine like you see like more frequently in the states which is a part of the experience i guess with pack pack me and dk kind of just have to pick them out of a box when we're <laughs> when we're at like gamestop let's say so yeah i like the pack packas but the price point is a little much i think they're like what like 10 bucks canadian retail yeah uh, which is just a little bit much i wish they were like 5.99 and then I would probably start buying them a bit more frequently because 10 bucks for a little figure, which is kind of almost smaller than a mystery mini, depending on what set you're buying is just ridiculous. And it's not like a thing that you necessarily love. Like, let's say with like Stranger Things for me with the mystery minis, it's just something that Funko has made. So I don't really feel like dropping a ton of money on a product that I don't really care a whole lot about. As terms to rating, I would say a six to 6.5, just because the mystery aspect but then also at the same time, especially because it's nothing license related, you're not really as motivated as, let's say, picking out a mystery mini case for like ad icons or stranger things. Yeah, I agree with the 6.5. The price point is just a little high for me. And it's like I said earlier, yeah, it's not a uh, show or an IP that I necessarily want to collect, but they are really cool figures. And I love the mystery aspect. I love most things about Paka Paka besides the uh, price point at $10 Canadian. All right, so the next Funko product is Soda Figures. Created in 2020, they are basically a three and a half to four inch figure. It comes inside of a black bag, which is inside of an aluminum can. It's one out of six for a chase figure of the certain thing. And then there's also a pog at the bottom of the can. And then the thing that's really interesting about Funko Sodas, or at least for the last little bit was that they were limited until obviously recently with some of the new Marvel ones and like DC where they are no piece counts. But for the most part, they are limited pieces. So if you pull that chase, there's only one out of so many different ones. And I mean, there's so many to list off for favorite sodas, but I'll just let MD express his opinion of sodas, which I can easily say has to be Funko's number two product behind Pops at this point. Yeah, Funko Soda is amazing. I, I love them. They're so cool. There's so much fun about them. It's the mystery aspect. Do you have the chase? Do you not have the chase? Which is awesome because with Pops, obviously, uh, the chase version usually goes as soon as it hits the shelf, or at least when someone sees that chase sticker. So it's great that you can get a chase at retail without it being like, scalped through already and there's so many different figures the figures look really cool i like the stylization of them i like how they have kept some similarities with pops where you have like one style of eye where it's kind of just like a little black oval for the eyes which is similar to pops because it's just a black circle and there's a lot of detail that goes into them for it being a little bit of a smaller figure but it is bigger than a mystery mini they're great i love how you have the can it comes with the pog that shows the piece count number which is great the the art stylization on the can is really cool. I think the only gripe that I have about them is that they're kind of hard to display. 
uh, especially when now I have like, it's got to be well over a hundred, probably close to 200 of them that I own considering we have done so many can cracking videos on the channel. So they're kind of hard to display. And there is some ways that you can display them where you buy, like, let's say the bases that you can either put them on and the pog gets displayed and the figure, or you can get those like clip on things that clip onto the top where you can display the pog and the figure on top. But then you got to spend extra money essentially to display them. So there, that's the only gripe I have with them. But besides that, it's an amazing, amazing product. As terms to rating, it'll probably be my highest rating I'll give out of all the products we're talking about, which I'm going to say 8.5. I think maybe even a nine, I think what lowers it from not being obviously a 10 out of 10 figure, I don't even think pops would technically be a 10 out of 10 figure. The fact of sometimes the price point of a soda, whether it's convention, a common, and especially with the recent price jump, it's a little iffy on how many sodas you want to buy at a time nowadays. Yeah, I, I would go with a nine with these. They're not perfect. And the price point is a little bit high at, let's say, like on average, about $20 Canadian, but it is a lot better than spending spending that $13 on a mystery mini because you're getting a little bit bigger of a figure. It has probably usually a little bit better of detail. And then you get the really cool can that goes well with it and displays nicely. And then you get the pog as well. And it's a limited piece count as well. You're guaranteed that figure that's inside the can it is just whether or not it is the chase. So even if you open it up and it is just the common, a lot of the times you can be happy with that because even the common figure looks good. All right. So the next product I'm going to be talking about is gold. Funko Gold created in 2021. They come in two different sizes. There's either a five inch figure or there is a 12 inch figure. And some of them are just singular figures. Some of them also have chases too, especially MD does have a couple of, I believe like every single Funko gold that he has, which I think is like two or three of them are chases that he just found in the wild. He'll go into discussion about them in a little bit, but uh, yeah, this is the set that basically consists of just sports and music. And then there's some artists even that like have not been made into pop form yet. Like Andre 3000, I believe his name is from outcast, but he's been made into gold form and that's the way to get him. And then I do enjoy the guns and roses ones they've done where the chases are like the skull faces from the appetite for destruction album cover. Yeah, Funko Gold is pretty sweet. I really enjoy them. I like the stylization of the figure. I like how they look. They do kind of have that hands to the side issue, but I feel like that can be fixed down the line. Funko does decide to keep producing Funko Gold figures. And yeah, the two that I do have in my collection are the chase versions of Russell Westbrook as well as Troy Polamalu. So I think that that's really cool. Those are two athletes that I enjoy from two sports that I might not be the hugest of fans of with basketball as well as football, but I like those figures. I think they were cool. I found the chase versions in the wild. For some reason, there's not a whole it like people don't really love the Funko Gold, so it's kind of easy to find chases, especially at our local Toys R Us. You basically go and there's like a chase version of every figure almost there. Still, one that I haven't got my hands on is that Slash, like DK had talked about. I did see the Axel Rose chase at the local toy show that we were just at. I uh, didn't pick it up because I feel like I just kind of want the chase of the slash and then I'd be happy with maybe not even getting the Axl Rose one. But I really do enjoy the package. I like how you can see the entire figure. The gold logo or label looks really nice on them. The figure itself looks really cool. I like how they're kind of like muscular the way that they look. They're pretty great figures in my opinion. In terms to rating, it's going to be a little bit low for me. I'm going to rate them six out of ten. I'm going to go with an eight and a half out of 10. And I'm also going to go with a hot take. If they opened up their licensing towards other characters and stuff like that, like let's say if every single Funko Pop had a gold figure, I'd get rid of every single Funko Pop that I own pretty much. And I would collect them in the gold stylization instead, because I really do like the way those figures look. So the next product we're going to be talking about is the mini moments created in 2021. They are basically a one inch figure and it comes with a scene. So some sort of room and they've made only a few. They've done The Office, Seinfeld and WandaVision. But I think a huge gripe with this is that I feel like you can't get one. You have to get all of them or else it just looks so awkward with it by itself. Yeah, these are pretty cool. And I like how they're very similar to Pint Size Heroes in the stylization of the figure. 
figure. But yeah, it is that thing where you definitely need to get all of the figures from the set or else it looks ridiculous. I own the Dwight Schrute. I kind of try to sell it because I don't really plan on getting the other office ones. And I just think that it just looks weird by itself. I probably should get all the Seinfeld ones. This would be really cool if we see more properties down the line. Like, let's say we get like that 70s show. You can do the basement or whatever. Or any other show that has like a super iconic like living room or certain building or whatever. If we do see more of them, I think that they will eventually get better and look a lot better. But so far, they're not bad, but they're also just not the greatest thing. As terms of rating, it's got to be a 5 out of 10. I mean, for depending on where you're getting it, the price point's a little steep. We were lucky enough, I believe we paid 10 bucks each, I think, for ours through Pop in a Box. But most retailers are... 15, 20, maybe even 25 for just one of them. And then you try to get, let's say, five of them. That's 100 bucks. Yeah, they're, they are a little pricey when you think about it like that. And I agree, five. It makes sense just to go right in the middle of it. They're not bad, but they're not great. And then the final Funko product we're going to be talking about, even though I did mention earlier, we're not going to talk about like pop related things. And although this kind of is pop, but it's not because especially the name, I thought I would mention it as one of the newer products, especially if we're not going to talk about Biddy Pops, and that is the Popsies. Created in 2022, they are a basically four to five inch figure that isn't really like a figure all that much. It's more of a oversized greeting card, I guess is the best way you can say it, where you press a button and then there's a message that comes out of either the head or the side of it. And then like the arms expand too. They've done a lot of them, like various Disney ones. They've done The Office, a couple of them. I can't remember anything else, but they're meh. I thought about getting one at some point, but I don't know when that will be, especially because there hasn't really been any that has come to Canada yet. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking is that like I've seen them. I actually just saw one at the toy show we were at. Yeah, they're not really in Canada or at least in our spot in Canada. So it's just not something that I'm like super hyped about because I'm not seeing them in stores. I do love the idea, though. It's so cool that it's like a greeting card. You can buy them for other people rather than buying them for yourself. You can receive them from other people. And I think if they were more widely available in Canada, I probably would have already received a few of them as gifts because just about everybody in my life know that I collect Funko products. And if someone saw one out in the wild, they'd probably buy it for me for like some occasion, like my birthday or Christmas or Easter or something like that. So I love the idea of them, but they are a little bit meh. I think that, again, like if Funko were to change some things up with them, they could be really great. But so far, how we've seen them, they are kind of just meh. And I'd probably have to rate them 5.5. There isn't really much going on with it. I mean, there's obviously more detail when you look at like mystery minis and Funko Gold and stuff like that, and especially Funko Soda. But obviously, there is a bit more going on than, let's say, a Pine Size Hero or a Dorbs with it, which makes it a little bit better than those. Yeah, I, I would probably give it about a six. Love the idea of it, but we don't see them in Canada, so that sucks. I don't know. They're just not the greatest thing in the world. Anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of this edition of a Funko Podcast. If you enjoyed this edition where we talk about Funko products that aren't pops, definitely like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you guys on another edition of a Funko Podcast. One, two, three, I'm out of here. Peace in, peace out.